Good morning. May God bless you and keep you on this beautiful day. Uh, we want to thank God for allowing him once again to wake us up to see another day today. We know uh, without his abundant grace and his, his enduring mercy uh, that we wouldn't be able to stand here today. Uh, once again, coming out of Book of Mark, the seventh chapter, Book of Mark, the seventh chapter. And this is one of those ones that is, it really, really resonates with a lot of people. It's probably one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's about the story of a Gentile woman, a Gentile woman who is in need of God, need uh, of, her, of her daughter being uh, uh, excised from these demons, right, that are, that are within her. Uh, it, but, but first, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing uh, your presence to be with us today. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, which dwells in all of us and around us and keeps us from falling, keeps our foot from, from hitting the stones. And, and, and Lord, you are just a mighty protector of all of us. And so we thank you for who you are today, providing food and shelter and clothing and a reasonable portion of good health and strength and mental health. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, friends and family and community and all these things that encompass our Christian faith today. For without these things, we are nothing. We are not set apart. We are not an ecclesia. We uh, need to be set apart from something because there is darkness in the world and uh, we are to be the light uh, in the midst of all this darkness. So bless us and keep us on this day. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. First, I want to say... Uh, we want to thank God for who he is today. And not only that, this beautiful story about the faith, about the f having faith in God, knowing that he is the one uh, that will listen to all of your cries, that will listen to all of your demands, that will listen to all of your prayer requests that you, prov that you set in front of him today. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for who you are and for allowing us to be a part of the church, to be a part of your ministry, to be a part of the kingdom of God. And we know that hundreds of thousands of people are being transformed each and every day, that they are finding Christ, uh, that they are proclaiming the good news, the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that this is not something that's not old, but this is something that is brand new each and every day. For our, our faith is renewed day by day. He gives us the ability to wake up and see another day today and to proclaim the good news, proclaim the gospel message, to look out into the universe and, 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 and see the heavens, right? See the blue skies or the dark skies and see the clouds, see the rain and see all these things, the birds of the air, uh, the fish in the ocean. We thank you for uh, allowing uh, all these things to come within us. A lot of people do not recognize these things because the light of God is not has not been magnified in them. So they're unable to recognize the goodness of God and what he has done, that he is the creator of this entire universe. Let's get to this passage of scripture today. It is one of these powerful ones. Looking out at uh, uh, book of Mark, the seventh chapter, verses 25, right? We can start uh, at 24, actually, 24, and in at verse 30. And the book of Matthew also, also talks about this particular story, uh, Matthew 15, 22 to 28. But we're looking at Mark 7, 24 through 30, right? And there are power in the crumbs is the title of this message today, power in the crumbs, right? And there are four, I'm going to uh, hit you with four basic points that we should draw from this passage of scripture today. And there are many, many more. I'm sure if you sat back and, and, and read the story over and over again and really, uh, you know, try to figure out what is going on in the story between this relate, between this conversation between Jesus and this woman and the disciples are also present. Right. But this is the story between Jesus and this woman. And she is not a woman of Judea. She is not of the 12 tribes of Israel. She is a Syrophoenician woman. She is a mixed race woman from from uh, parts of Syria. Right. Uh, or, uh, you know, the parts of Tyre and Sidon were these, were these Greek communities, right, that, that uh, worshipped idols and things like this. So this is Gentile territory where this woman approaches Jesus. Jesus is up in Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon, uh, 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 Tyre meaning fishing, right? These places uh, were on the coast of Israel. So these were fishing communities, right? And so he is approached by this woman. Let's read this in its entirety. Uh, uh, Matthew seven twenty four through 30. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. 
As we stated on last week, these Pharisees and Sadducees, as I digress for a moment, uh, were challenging Jesus Christ because, because of the, uh, the fact that his disciples, uh, Jesus and his disciples, were not cleaning their hands, right, before they ate or, you know, all the things that were ceremonial that should have taken place, right, ever, ever since the times of Moses that Jesus and his disciples were not doing. And it was then that Jesus Christ really, really, really laid into these Pharisees and told them about, you know, from the very beginning, you know, I am that I am, you know, before Abraham was, I am, you know, I know, I knew Moses, I know Moses, right? I know Abraham. So you cannot tell me about something dealing with uh, uh, these instruments, these brass instruments uh, for, for worship service and the washing of hands and things like this. I'm the one who instructed Moses to create the Ark of the Covenant and to create all these elements that are needed for worship within the temple of God. I am the one who told him to build the basin so Aaron and his sons could wash their hands and wash uh, with, within and without, right? From the top of their head to the bottom of their feet to wash before they went into the temple. I'm the one who set that in motion, right? So you cannot tell me about the cleanliness of hands that, 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 that if, if you don't, if an individual does not clean their hands, right, that they are somehow uh, a less religious or God does not dwell within that person because they don't follow the laws and the rules of Moses that were laid out thousands of years earlier. I am that I am, right? I created Moses. I'm the one who told Moses to do what he did, right? I'm the one who said that there was one that's going to be coming that's greater than him, so you cannot tell me about that. So here we are. So Jesus is now up in the region of Tyre and Sidon, up in this Gentile territory. And we do know that he has came for the lost sheep of Israel. He makes that clear in this passage of scripture today. Let's continue to read this in, in its entirety. I love this story. For a certain woman whose daughter uh, had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, right? For it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it into the puppies, right? And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. For he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil uh, is gone out of thy daughter. And when she's come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. Hmm. Matthew said it best, right? Matthew really, really, uh, you know, you know, he said, you know, I have never seen such great faith. Uh, woman, you have great faith, right, is what he states. Uh, and so this is a powerful, powerful testament that's going on today. Uh, many people, many theologians surmise, right, that this was derogatory, that Jesus felt that he was above everyone. Uh, that the Jewish people were above everyone and that they took priority over everything. But this is a setup, right? Doesn't matter how you look at it, right? He knows this woman already. He knows what is about to happen. He knows what she is going to say. He knows that this, that this daughter uh, had, you know, is demon-possessed, right? But he is making a point to us here in 2023 about his deity, about his piety, that he is here for the Jew and for the Greek. And so what happened was he opened the doors for uh, the Syrophoenician woman and many in, in Greek society of that time, right, to be transformed, to, uh, to be informed, to know that Jesus Christ is a son of God, right, that there is uh, no particular race, no particular religion, uh, no gender, that Jesus Christ is not going to perform uh, what he set out to do. Jesus first states, right, in this passage of scripture, right, I didn't come for y'all. Right. I didn't come for you. I came for the lost sheep of Israel. That's who I came for. Right. Even though they don't accept me as their Messiah, I am who they came for. Right. But this woman challenges Jesus. Right. The son of the living God, the Messiah. Right. Because Jesus knows that he came. He stepped down out of these 40 generations to come and dwell amongst us. Right. As someone who is poor. He became poor for our sakes, right? That we may, that we may find him, right? And so what happens is this woman realizes, right, uh, that I, uh, just as we've spoken for the past few weeks, right, I am in a desperate situation, right? I have been to the religious leaders. I have spoken to other individuals about my situation. My daughter is demon-possessed, 
and I am desperate, right? So I'm going to go out of my way, right? And follow behind these disciples saying, yeah, have mercy on me, Lord. Hey, Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. My daughter is demon possessed. Can you do something for her? And you can just about imagine Jesus turning around and saying, listen, I didn't come for you, right? In a very, uh, probably not a derogatory way, but a, 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 a test of her faith, right? And this is where we're at today, that Jesus act, you know, that he does the same to us, right? These four points that I want to, to talk about, right, is that point number one, that we should seek Jesus, right? As this woman, as the Syrophoenician woman sought Jesus, that's what we should be doing each and every day of our lives, that the, the presence of Christ, that the presence of God manifests or rests upon our, our souls, upon our spirits each and every moment of the day, that we are praying continuously for, for who he is, right? To, that he will not leave us nor forsake us, that he, that, that he knows that we can do nothing without him. So we should always seek Jesus, right? She had heard about Jesus, right? I'm in a desperate situation. My daughter, all right, she's in, she's in bad shape. And yet, and, and yet, you know, I know you came for these lost sheep of Israel, right? But I know there's some crumbs. There are some remnants, right, of something that you can give to me, right, that my daughter will be made whole. Point number two, believe and have faith in all things. She continues to follow. She does not give up, right, as the disciples are pushing her away, I can imagine. And, but she continues to follow, really. Have, you know, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Please help me. I'm in a desperate situation here. Can you please help me? My daughter is demon-possessed. I love my daughter, right? And I don't care about the religious uh, aspects of the day. Maybe I'm, I'm going out of the way to, to speak to a Jewish, master, a Jewish master, a Jewish teacher, a Jewish preacher, right? And I know that I could be cast out of society for being a woman in order to, you know, you know just, to be, just being able to do these things, right? Uh, I could be stoned, right? Uh, people could uh, ban me from society for doing what I'm doing, right? But I'm in a desperate situation. I love my daughter just as you love the lost sheep of Israel. Point number three, never give up on Jesus. She never gave up on Jesus, despite the fact that the disciples are just kind of just blocking her, right? And she's saying, you know, do something, Lord. Can you do something? Can you do something to help me, right? So never give up on Jesus. That means that we should always pray is what this passage of Scripture is saying, that we should pray continuously, that we pray uh, pray and fast at all times, uh, knowing that Jesus will make a way, maybe not in the time that we would want him to, but he will make a way out of no way, and he will uh, uh, he will answer your prayers as he said he would. Right? He 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 is listening intently. Right? Uh, he's making a way out of no. He has to put things in order. Right? Oftentimes, when you're looking to buy that new house, right, or that new car, you're a young person, whatever. As you're praying for these things, or to get to uh, you know go to a major university in the next few weeks, right? That, that you're praying, and all these things had to line up, right? Six or seven months prior, right, or two or three months prior or maybe two or three weeks prior, all these people had to be lined up through all your prayer and supplication. All this stuff had to align in order for you to be in that particular situation. The mortgage, the car, the education, your finance, right? Whatever's going on in your life, he is the one who had to make that happen. And it's a process. That's why we have to continuously pray. Now, this woman had heard about Jesus. We don't know, was it of maybe a few days, maybe it was a few months, but she had heard about Jesus, right? And probably didn't have the resource to go and see Jesus because, and not only that, she's a sour Phoenician woman, so she probably wouldn't come all the way down to Jerusalem, right? Because she's a Gentile, right? She doesn't believe in what they believe in. She doesn't believe in the Decalogue. She doesn't believe in the laws of Moses. She doesn't, she has no, I, I, I don't, none of that applies to me. I'm not part of of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? I don't know about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't know about Moses and Abraham and Sarah and Ishmael, and I, I don't know about any of that, right? All I know is that I've heard that there's a man, he's a healer, and that there was a young girl, and she was dead, right? Jairus' daughter, and he raised her up from the dead. That's all I know. I, I, that's what I've heard. I heard there was a woman with the issue of blood, and she came and touched the hem of his garment, and she became Whole. That, that's all I know. And I, and I know that there was a man who had uh, uh, hundreds of demons within him, right? And, 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 and he was always cutting and, and breaking the bonds, breaking the chains, and he cried out in the tombs day in and day out. 
And I know that this Jesus came and, uh, and, and the demons, uh, you know, were, were released and went into the pigs and went into the ocean. Those are the stories that I've heard about this man named Jesus. So please have mercy on me. Maybe my story, right, is not as big as all these others, right? But I am a Syrophoenician woman. I even know I'm not of the Jewish faith, right? I don't know about any of all that, right? I don't know about what happened in Egypt. I don't, you know, I don't know about all these things, but I do know that you can make a difference in my daughter's life. Never give up on Jesus. That point number four, and prepare, right? Prepare oneself to receive a blessing from God. She is preparing herself. She is uh, knowing that something is about to happen and she is not going to give up. She is not going to give up. And let's look at this once again, right? And from thence he arose and went into the borders, right? And he entered into a house, right? Would have no man uh, come there because he, uh, you know, he was he was hiding. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say Jesus is tired. He's the son of God, right? But he is being pressed uh, for these past six chapters in the book of Mark. He's always being pressed, right? For this certain woman whose young daughter had an, had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. One thing we need to keep in mind, right, throughout Scripture, there's always times, right, throughout Scripture from the very moment that Jesus Christ was born in the manger, someone came and dwelt, uh, uh, knelt down at his feet, right? From the time that he was a newborn baby, people came and knelt down. When they were uh, mocking him, right, in Matthew 27 to 29, and after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him, mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, right? In Mark 5 and 6, seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down, before him. In Mark 10 and 17, as he was uh, setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life, right? Over in the book of Luke 5 and 8, but when Simon Peter saw, saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, go away uh, from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man, right? Uh, Matthew 18 and 26, so the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him saying, have patience with me and I will repay you everything. Oftentimes, you know, there's always someone bowing down to Jesus, recognizing who he is, right? That he is the son of God, that he is the Messiah, that he's a preacher, that he's a teacher, that he's a healer, right? And he can do something to make an impact in my life, right? This woman was a Greek Syrophoenician by nation, as I stated, of this mixed race, right? And what this means, right? The term Syrophoenician is used in the Bible to describe, right, a woman from the borders of Tyre and Sinai whose daughter Jesus healed, right? Taking this from uh, another theologian. And, uh, and she is also referred to as a Greek, as a Gentile, right? The term Syrophoenician indicates that this woman was from Phoenicia, located in a Roman province of Syria, more specifically from the area of the old cities of Tyre and Sidon. The word may, uh, may have been used to distinguish them from the Phoenicians who lived in Africa or the Carthaginians, right? The world was not that heavily populated at that time, right? So there was recognition when you put names and cities together, right? They'd always maybe put uh, the, the nation or the types of people in front of the name of the community or vice versa. Uh, that verse 27, but, pe but Jesus said unto her, let the children, ooh, right? He's talking about Israel, right? These people who do not accept me as their Messiah, but I am their God and I was sent for them. And I know that they're going to be, that they're going to destroy me, right? Really, really soon, right? But I was sent for them to save them, right? Because it's the Gentiles. It's you that you, you, you your story is going to be one that the Jewish people will look at and say, okay, this, if he's going to do this for her and she's not even of the Jewish faith, right? What more can he do for me? Amen. He said, let the children first be filled for it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it into the dogs. Not meaning the big dogs, right? Oftentimes when you're sitting at the table, uh, uh, you know, the crumbs fall on the table and these, these puppies, right? This is not uh, a derogatory term, but Jesus kind of used a mirror this parabolic uh, t uh, t terminology or methodology to explain, right, uh, to this woman that, hey, when you're sitting at the table eating, right, it's not good that we take the food that should go into the mouths of the children sitting around the table, right, and give it to the dogs, right? They, these children need nourishment too, right? They, uh, they, need, to, they need to be filled, right? They, uh, you, so you don't take uh, what's most important and give it to the dogs if the children need to eat, right? And so Jesus is pretty much stating that these children of Israel, this lost 
these lost people of Israel who are who need to find him, who are seeking after Jesus, right, need to be filled, right? And I'm I have been sent by God to fill their bellies, right? Because even though they know, right, about the laws of Moses, right, but greater is one. There greater uh, there will be a greater one coming after Moses. I am He, right? So it is up to you, this Syrophoenician woman, right, to expel the myths, right? To begin to, to begin to tell your story about how Jesus Christ came to town and made your daughter whole. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Right? So so now her theology is much greater than Jesus's at this time, right? That 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 that, that even no crumbs fall on the table, right? Everyone is being fed. Your children of Israel, all these people that you came to die for, right? Yeah, they will be filled, but I know you've got some remnants. I know you've got some space left for me to fulfill my my concerns, my needs as well. I know there's something in that bag for me, right? I know there's something uh, uh, in that package for me, in that box for me. I know. Just just give me just give me one of the crumbs, right? Just a remnant of your abundant grace, your abundant mercy, and your power, and I'll go my own way. Because as I say, I don't know about the Decalogue and uh, the Ten Commandments and the the Torah and Moses parting the Red Sea, and I, I don't I don't know about any of that, right? I don't know about Gershom. I don't know about Joshua and all that. All I know is that my daughter needs to be healed, right? And he said, go, he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil has gone out of my daughter, right? He sends her away, and by the time she reaches home, she realizes that her daughter is sitting up in bed in her right state of mind, right? But what Matthew said, right, as I stated, it is so powerful how Matthew put it, right? I was sent out to the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman came and knelt, Lord, help me. And she, she replied, right? And Matthew said it best, right? Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and your daughter was healed at that very moment. This is the Jesus that we serve, right? That he is uh, uh, the one who has remnants of his abundant grace and mercy and his power that lives in the crumbs, right? If we just eat of the crumbs or just take a vapor, right, of, of the odor, the sweet odor of Jesus, right, that, that he will make things all right, right? That if we just have a little bit of faith, right, if we just trust in him, right, and continue to pray to him, right, that he will make everything all right. But we have to be patient and trust in him as this Syrophoenician woman did, right? So we need to point number one, seek Jesus. Point number two, believe and have faith in all these things. And then point number three, never give up on Jesus. Continue to pray, right? And fast, right? Pray, 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 right? And point number four, prepare to receive your blessing from God. Prepare yourself for the blessing. Even though you don't see it coming right now, do notice as as you pray in supplication, that means pray continuously, that your blessings Uh, will be answered by Jesus Christ, right? Power in the crumbs. This is our Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If there's not if there's one who does not know Jesus Christ as a pardon of their sins, right? This is the time just to seek him. Sit at your kitchen table, go into the restroom, go outside in the garage, right? Go out on your deck, right? Go for a walk and ask Jesus, Lord, can you come into my life today, right? I'm not sure about my salvation, right? I want some crumbs. I want some remnants of something that's falling from your table. That's all I want. I don't want everything, right? Because I don't know everything. I don't know everything that happened in the Old Testament, right? All I know is that you're in the new. So Lord, just accept me, right? And I'll do your will, right? Until the day that I die. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for allowing us to understand that that even the crumbs, right? There's power in the crumbs, right? That that we will be filled, that the children of Israel will be filled, right? If they choose to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, and you will not even give up on them for there will come a day when they will turn to you, Lord. And we're we're fastly approaching that day when the, the Jewish people will turn to Jesus Christ and all knees shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Christ. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are today. Thank you for uh, allowing us to get ahead uh, of the Jewish people. For you said, Lord Jesus, that, uh, that the first shall be last and the last shall be first, right? So we all have a seat at this kingdom with you, Lord. So bless us and keep us on this day. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.